no matter where I go, seduces one like Paris does all mass. The streets of Pingal, the bars of Leal, the brasseries and the cafes of Montparnasse, the cabarets and bistros where the writer or artist go are as much a part of Paris as Le Tour Eiffel. The restaurants for the purists, the nightclubs for the tourists, we have those in abundance as well. Paris can be a dangerous affair. She offers far more folly than the folly berger. For sheer sophistication plus some higher education, the smartest set can't wait to step this way. For here at Club Chez Louis, as you're all about to see, we'll tell you straight. <laughs> Why gay Paris is gay Paris by night, Paris la nuit Seduces us in ways we don't expect to be She has magic from which even a Houdini can't be free Mystery that's haunted us and taunted us through history. Shady secrets, she is all too aware. We long to share. That's why it is, I guess, we all adore her and hunger to explore her hidden charms. She fools us. Because she's so capricious And nothing's more delicious Than to sleep in her arms Cause Paris by night You can't condemn They say she's really at her best From 2 to 6 a.m. Subway! She's sublime Thank you. You are most kind. In fact, you're every kind. Oh, I see we have a celebrity with us this evening. Miss Simone Callisto, star of stage, screen, and an occasional circus. Take a bow, darling. Up yours, Sherry. And speaking of the circus, aren't you Richard DiNardo, the well-known trapeze artist? Careful, Toddy. You know, you're really not very funny, so why don't you just piss off? <laughs> You know you should be ashamed of yourself bringing your sweet old mother to a place like this. Stop! Wait! Please! Please! Toddy, apologize at once. Why isn't she his mother? How dare you! I will not be insulted like this. We are leaving. I'll be by to pick up my clothes. If you don't feel like climbing the stairs, I'll be more than happy to throw them out the window. Toddy? Just because you've had a spat with Richard, you have no right to insult the customers. Oh, come, come now. They've been insulted so many times, they'd be insulted if I didn't insult them. I'm warning you, if you do it again, I'll fire you in spite of your bar bill. Madame! Good evening. Oh, good evening. Uh, may I? Oh. Uh, Gregor, be a dear and drum up some hot cocoa for the lady and put a stiff shot of brandy in it to put it on its feet. Oh. But you, do, do, you were saying, mademoiselle. Madam, I, I was? Yes, you got as far as, oh, but. Oh, but. Oh, yes, 
Well, well, well... well uh, would it be less traumatic if I voiced it for you? Uh, yes, if you can. Oh, I can probably come close. Oh, but I'm broke. I came in here because I'm cold and hungry. And I haven't a place to stay. Did I leave anything out? <laughs> oh, Gregor, mon petit chou. <laughs> merci, merci. <laughs> Good evening. Allow me to present Monsieur Henri Lebis, the proprietor of this gothic establishment. How do you do? Madame. Uh, Grant. Is from England. And you and Toddy are all friends, no? Yes. yes. No. no. Yes. yes. Madame Grant is hypoglycemic. She needs to drink something with a lot of sugar in it. I see. And may I ask how long you intend to stay in Paris? Mm. Uh, actually, was, I was hoping to get a job. Oh, really? What kind of job? A singing. Ah, you're a singer. Yes. Yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, she's a very good singer. Well, uh, I'd be happy to sing for you. Yes, I'm sure you would. But first, however, is this small matter of the bill. Oh. Whatever happened to Henri Lebis, the take-a-chance entrepreneur who threw caution to the wind? Buddy. Why, just this morning, I was speaking with Madame Grant's agent about arranging an audition. <laughs> Her agent. André Cassel. André Cassel? André Cassel. Yes. I spent Christmas with André. I might be able to get him to reduce his commission. Who said anything about a commission? On the other hand, if there is no audition, I suppose... No, 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 no Toddy, really, if... Uh, Monsieur Cassel wishes you to audition for me, madame... <laughs> Be my guest. Uh, uh, now? Why not? Well, 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 I have my music, but I don't play. Ah, allow me. Um, it's an old English song. Whenever you're ready. It's very English. Trust me. Oops. Legitimate voice. Yes, well, you see, if I was looking, I would be looking for something more illegitimate. I'm, I'm sure, with a little practice. Lady, I, that I, is like a nun saying with a little practice she could be a streetwalker. It has to come naturally. That is so right. You know, in some professions, the practice is <laughs> a minor consideration. And I find it hard to believe that Andre Casal would even consider having you audition for me. He didn't. But you said. I lied. And in spite of what you think, Monsieur Lebis, there are still some professions where practice makes perfect. Oh. Thank you very much. Au revoir. Brava! Brava! Toddy, that is a last straw. You're fired. You can't fire me. I know, and why not? I can't afford it. Toddy? Oh, very and well. Until you pay your bar bill, you're forbidden to step foot in Shady Wee. And if you do, I'll have you thrown out. Mm -hmm. Don't make it sound like such a threat. Being thrown out of this place is slightly better than being thrown out of the leper colony. Out! Ah! Madame Grant. Oh, 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 it's you again. Come on. Oh, where are we going? To my flat. Oh, uh, thank you. You've been very kind, but no. Relax, I'm gay. Oh, that's the nicest thing anyone said to me all day. <laughs> Leon Macduff. With pleasure. But isn't the correct quote, Leon Macduff? Mm, Leon, led on. What's the difference? I guess that depends on whether you'd rather be led or laid. <laughs> Cozy, and with a little luck, I might be able to drum up a nice cup of strong tea. Oh, the surest way to a British soprano's cold heart. <laughs> Bless you. Oh, I must be catching cold. Here, get out of those wet things. 
May I ask you a personal question? How long have I been gay? Oh, uh, no, how long have you been a hypochondriac? What makes you think I'm a hypochondriac? Mm, educated, yes, my ex-husband was. The day we got married, he developed shingles. And the day we separated, his ulcer perforated. And the day we got a divorce, he sneezed and lost all the hair on his body. <laughs> <laughs> Heavens. You should goggle. Good idea. Yes. So, what's an English soprano doing in Paris? Well, she was touring with the Bath Touring Light Opera Company. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> oh, no sense in spreading germs. <laughs> so whatever oh, happened you. to the Bath Touring Light Opera Company? Well, you might say that the producer took French leave with the bankroll. <laughs> you should stay in bed and force liquids. Oh, it's nothing but a cold. Mm, a cold tonight can turn into pneumonia in the morning. Are you sure your husband was a hypochondriac before he married you? Uh, as soon as my things are dry, I'm going to sneak back into my hotel room. Ah, uh, we'll solve everything tomorrow. Right now, you're going to put on some pajamas and climb into bed. Bed? Well, you're welcome to the sofa, but you have my word that this is infinitely more comfortable and just as safe. <laughs> Here, these are for you. Voila. Oh, may I use a bathroom? <laughs> as much as you like. <laughs> How's the tea? Almost as good as the brandy. Oh, if it's of any interest, I always keep a spare toothbrush in the medicine chest next to the spare toothpaste. Oh, thank you. You know, I would sleep better if I knew your name. Carol Todd. Toddy to my friends use my spare toothbrush and sleep in my bed. <laughs> what do your friends call you? Victoria. Huh. Never Vicky? Never twice. <laughs> Bless you. There's nothing more inconvenient than an old queen with a head cold. <laughs> oh, I think I have a temperature. You mean fever. Everyone has a temperature, unless they're dead. <laughs> Here. You know, you look better in Richard's pajamas than he does. <laughs> of course, he looks better out of them. Who's... Richard. Oh, someone who used to stay here from time to time. Were you in love with him? From time to time. Mm. Well, I don't mean to pry, but if, if, you, if you had your druthers, now, wouldn't you rather be... Normal. Uh, no, straight. If I had my druthers, which I don't, but if I did, I'd rather be you. Me? Female like you would be just fine. <laughs> well... I guess I can relate to that. There have been times in my life when I honestly wish I was a man. Why, for heaven's sake? That's easy. If I were a man, I could do a lot of things a woman never can. Like what? Be free to plot and plan. Free to live my life without permission from a man. made for him which it is he presumes that the world indulges every whim if it's his what a fabulous pursuit hands in pockets running things I must say it appeals in my hundred dollar suit Glancing at my golden fob watch as I make my deals. Lucky man who is not made to feel. I can also run. What a lovely life I'd plan if I were a man. I would build all the tallest buildings reaching up to the sky. I'd explore every bar of land and I would learn how to fly. What a triumph it would be doing all that fellas do but better and this
never be a man. Would you like to know what I think? I told you I would love to know what you think. I think with a few alterations, you'd make a damn attractive man. Really? Trust me. <laughs> and I know what kind of alterations would you have in mind exactly? Superficial. Um, a haircut, perhaps a fake mustache. <laughs> Nothing irrevocable. <laughs> what a relief. For my money, you're much more a man than Richard. Oh. <laughs> and speaking of my money, hello, Richard. Well. I can see it didn't take you very long. Oh, boy. Can't this wait until tomorrow, Richard? No. We're on our way to Monte Carlo, and I came by to pick up my things. So take them off, buddy. I beg your pardon? I'm very particular about who wears my pajamas. Really? Since when? Look! Are you going to take them off, or am I? Look, I'll make a deal with you, Richard. Forget about the pajamas, and I'll forget about the money that you owe me. I don't owe you a thing. You pathetic old faggot! Get up! Get back into bed! You broke my nose! Well, well, next time you'll pick on somebody your own size! Who get you for this, Tony? Get! Ow! Where did you learn to throw a punch like that? Sister Clementine. <laughs> that was Richard. Yes, I'm afraid so. What a horrible man. Well, he was jealous. He thought you were my new lover. <laughs> <laughs> you mean he actually thought I was a man? Yes, he really did. Oh, well, he's lucky I'm not. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, what's wrong? I just had the most incredible idea, Victoria. Oh. You, you said you always wanted to be a man. Oh, no, no, no. I said that, that there were times when I well, said... Well, here's your chance. What an inspiration. Europe's greatest female impersonator. Who? You. Me? You'll be a star. You'll be bigger than Garbo and Dietrich by far. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. If fate is kind, you could be Mr. Gay and Chevalier combined. Trust me. What are you are crazy? Yes. The trick for a drag queen is trying to act like a woman, which very few can. But the fact is, a drag queen's a man. You're not a man. I'm glad you know. You're a woman. They'll think is a man. What a plan. Trust me. <laughs> now being a girl, they all think as a man sets their minds in a world. Trust me. All you have to do for the dream to come true is go out there and be what you are. And we'll make you a world famous star. Lower your voice. Toddy. Lower. Toddy. Caruso. Not Charlie up. Toddy, if you don't get back into that bed, you're going to be better. Good. When you get angry, your voice lowers naturally. Think angry. Look. You don't have to do anything new. Simply do what you do when you're you. I don't do that. And the audience won't have a clue. It's true. So, for your plan. Your plan. To succeed and it can, they must think you're a man. Trust me. Trust me. If you're a man, you'll be the biggest star since shows began. Trust me. Trust me. The beauty of this is like all great ideas. It's as simple as simple can be. And we'll have each other to thank. For a penthouse at the shore sank. It's a free ride to you trust me? Or should I? Trust me. Could I? Trust me. It will work, Victoria. Toddy will not. Tomorrow afternoon, Andre Casella is going to meet Europe's greatest female in Paris.
impersonator. Look, Andre Cassell is the biggest agent, producer in Paris, and then I'm, I'm the biggest. Why isn't he out of me? Well, you are the biggest, but you're unknown outside of Poland. Poland? You're a Count Victor Grozinski, a Polish aristocrat, but your family disowned you when they discovered that you were gay. <laughs> we met in Warsaw, fell in love, and I brought you to Paris. Oh, I see. It's all very, very clear now. Mm -hmm. I see. This cannot fail. I agree. To get both of us dumped in some grim Paris jail, Toddy, trust me, that up, trust me. Victoria Grant's got a much better chance singing Tosca in London on sea. My proposal is not that bizarre. Yes, it is. And Cassell's, you become a huge star. It's for fraud. who they think that you are. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's right? A woman impersonating a man imp impersonating a woman? Darling, to convince an audience that an illusion is real, the magician must create a plausible diversion. <laughs> and Count Victor Grozinski is our plausible diversion. Oh, no audience is that gullible. They'll know he's a phony. Exactly. What? They'll know he's a phony. Trust me! curtain. Andre. Uh, just a moment. Uh, I'm Carol Todd. Uh, lucky you. And Monsieur Cassell and I are old friends. And how do you define an old friend? Your employer attended my Christmas party. You call that old friend? He stayed until New Year's. Andre. It's Carol Todd. Christmas 32, Psst. hot toddy. Mon dieu, <laughs> toddy. <laughs> Forgive me, I hardly recognize you. Out of uniform, he played Santa Claus. And you put a chair upside down on your head and declared you were one of my reindeer. Prancer, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> now, what can I do for you, old friend? Well, old friend, it's more what I can do for you. Andre, allow me to present Count Victor Grozinski, Europe's greatest female impersonator. Count, if you please. One, two, three, four. 
Did you break anything? Yes. What? Everything. Oh. <laughs> well, Toddy, old friend, what say we adjourn to my office and discuss the Count's future in show business? I say by all means, old friend. Count? By all means. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, 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 after you. Oh, uh, no, after you, Count. <laughs> Please, call me Victor. Uh. <laughs> Until we meet again, then. Victor. <laughs> Until then. Oh! Uh. oh. <laughs> Miss Selma, if he's so great, why hasn't anyone ever heard of him? Well, he was coming. When did you plan to present him to the public? What kind of act does he do? Does he oh. speak French? Is he married? How did you discover How old is he? Do you know how old is he? Do you know how old is he? Do you know how old is he? Oh, that's better. Now, if you all talk at once, we cannot understand your questions. And if Monsieur Cassel and Monsieur Todd cannot understand your questions, then they cannot answer them now, can they? The can they? Now, one at a time. Mr. Todd, is it true that you were the one who discovered the Count? In Poland, he's known as Victor. Uh, well, the Count. Did you discover Victor, Mr. Todd? Uh, he was already a great star in Poland. Personally, we met, became good friends. Professionally speaking, my old friend, Cassell, <laughs> deserves the credit. Does Victor speak French? He sounds more English than Polish. Well, he was educated in England and remained there for a number of years before returning to Poland. What did he do in England? He was a waitress. You mean a waiter. What? You said waitress. I did mean... Yes, well, but she, he knew that waitresses made more money in tips, especially if they have great legs. And the Count has great legs? Sensational. Marlene and Dietrich saw them and has been wearing trousers ever since. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I have another appointment. Why take Toddy's word for it? Why don't you come tonight to say for yourselves, see for yourselves, when I step upon this stage and announce to Cassel's faithful and discerning patron Ladies and gentlemen, Mesdames and Herren, Mesdames et Messieurs, it is my great pleasure to present to you, for your great pleasure, the most sensational, truly unique talent of the century, direct from Poland, a Polish national treasure, the one, the only, Victor! Found a new kind of music And they decided to call it jazz No other sound has what this music has Before they knew it, it was whizzing round the world The world was ready for a Blue kind of music and now they play it from Steamboat Springs to La Paz. There is a story that began in New Orleans about a lady who discovered this music. She fell completely in love with jazz. Like this lady has 
They say today the lady travels round the world. You only see her when they're playing this music. That's why they've seen her from Steamboat Springs to La Paz. Just ask her escort to give her jazz on the tiles. Oh, baby, won't you play me the jazz hot, baby, and don't ever let it end. I tell your friend it's real.
can't believe it's a guy. I don't believe it's a guy. That's crazy. They wouldn't dare say it's a guy if it ain't. Isn't? Isn't. That's a felonious attempt to defraud the public. Well, either way, you gotta admit, he sure is beautiful. That's because he is not a he. He is beautiful because he is a she. Well, geez, you don't have to get so steamed about it. You act like he was falling in love or something. Come on. Uh-oh. Oh, ho, ho. Oh. He got your motor running. Don't be ridiculous. I gotta admit, he sure got my motor running. <laughs> what is this, some kind of conspiracy? Monsieur Marchand. André Cassel, delighted you could make it. If you'd like to follow me backstage, I'll introduce you to Monsieur Victor. Attention, attention. After the reception, there will be a car at the stage door waiting to take you to the party. <laughs> Darlings, you were all wonderful. Oh, merci, you, merci. André is coming with King Marchand. King? Oh, my God, King of what? Well, among other things, he owns the most successful nightclub in Chicago. And the other things? Well, gangster would be an appropriate designation. He's also quite the ladies' man, so watch your step. Oh, don't worry, don't forget. I'm a man. Don't you forget it. Victor, may I introduce King Marchand? How do you do? Uh, uh. <laughs> Hi. That's some grip you got there. I'm Norma Cassidy. You were grand. When you took off that wig, I couldn't believe that you were a man. King still doesn't. Uh, may I present Monsieur Todd? A pleasure. <laughs> oh, Miss Cassidy. Oh, enchanted. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, what do you think of my new star? He thinks he's a phony. <laughs> what? I think you're very talented. But he doesn't think you're a man. I'll tell her what I think. Her, see? Norma. Yeah? Mingle. Sure. Care to mingle, Mr. Todd? Uh, Miss Cassidy, Victor's performance excluded. Mingling with you may prove to be the high point of the evening. I just love Frenchmen. So do I. You were saying, Monsieur Marchand? I find it hard to believe that you're a man. Oh, because you found me attractive as a woman. Yes, as a matter of fact. Well, it happens frequently. Not to me. Well, I guess that just proves the old adage, there's always a first time. I don't think so. Excusez-moi. Oh. Pardon, uh, Monsieur Victor. I am Henri Labisse. How do you do? Uh, the proprietor of Chez Louis, of course. You've heard of it. Yes. You have? Oh, of course, but you have never been there. Yes. You have? Uh, uh no. Uh, 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 yes. I have never been there. Well, at any rate, or in any case, whether you have or not, it would be my great honor. Labisse. Toddy, old friend, how are you? How did you get in here without an invitation? Oh, but Toddy, I have an invitation. No, Henri, what you have is a mistake. I won't forget this, Toddy. I'm counting on it. Oh, my God, don't ever leave me alone like that again. Would you please excuse us? We have to be going. We do? I have an early golf game. Since when? Tell me, Count, do you play? Oh, golf, oh, yes, occasionally. Really? What's your handicap? Being gay. What's yours? Cassell, tell me, how did you discover Monsieur Victor? And you walk into my theater and sing a G flat above high C. Incredible. I've never heard of a man being able to sing that high. You're a gambling man, Monsieur Marchand. Would you care to make a small wager? A uh, small. C'est thousand francs. Let's make it interesting. Let's say 10,000. Forget it. I thought so. Make it 20,000. Bet. <laughs> You're coming to the party, of course. No. No? Please give Victor my regards and tell her that... Percy? Tell Victor. I look forward to seeing the show again. I'll be happy to tell him. Good night. Bonsoir. Mr. Todd, I'm really sorry we can't come to the party. Well, it won't be the same without you, Miss Cassidy. Norma. <laughs> Till we meet again. Norma. Real soon, I hope. Norma. Keep your pants on! Bonsoir, Mr. Todd.
Bonsoir, Norma. <laughs> Are you okay? Where's the beast? Oh, gone with the others. Oh, did you see the look on his face when I hit that high note? Oh, damn King Marchand for goading me into it. And what did you think of King Marchand? Oh, well, I think King Marchand is an arrogant, chauvinistic, conceited pain in the neck. I think I could fall in love with him. I think I could, too. I'll bet you ten francs that he cancels the golf game and comes to the party. Oh, it makes you think that. Because he's smitten. Oh, come on. Mm -hmm, which means he's dangerous. Dangerous? Trust me. His manhood's at stake. No telling to what lengths he'll go to prove that you're a fraud. Now you finish changing, and I'll make sure that the evil the beast is not lurking at the stage door. <laughs> Look who's coming. You owe me ten francs. I never took your bet. Because you knew you'd lose. Glad to see you change your mind. <laughs> oh, yes, it's quite late. What happened to your golf game? He cancelled it. Well, you did. I'm flattered. It's supposed to rain. Maloney, he'd rather be here. We meet again, Mr. Todd. Uh, so it would seem. Norma, <laughs> would you like a... I'd love to. ...drink? Looks like Norma's in for a big surprise. Why is that? Well, isn't Mr. Todd, uh... Well, isn't he? Isn't he what? You're not gonna help me with this, right? Right. Isn't Mr. Todd a homeless... ...sexual? Now, don't you think that's something you should ask Mr. Todd? Are you two lovers? Oh, do you mean do we love each other? Yes. Do we cohabit? Yes. Do we have sex? Never mind. You don't want to know? No. Oh, because the idea of two men is disgusting. No, actually, it's because I still don't believe you're a man. I think your problem, Mr. Marchand, is that you're preoccupied with stereotypes. I think it's as simple as you're one kind of man and I'm another. And what kind of man are you? One that doesn't have to prove it to myself or to anyone else. We prefer gay. But you're so attractive, it seems like such a waste. Trust me, it's not wasted. Oh, shame on you. You know, I bet the right woman could reform you. Oh, I suppose anything is possible. <laughs> Who knows? The right woman might even reform you. <laughs> <laughs> me? Give up men? Never. You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> I'm sorry, Norma, my tango's a little rusty. But I'll lay eight to five. The Count does a great tango. Oh, yeah. Great. Come on, Count. King still thinks you're a dame. Let's show him. Miss Cassidy.
imagine what Sal Andretti would say if he knew his partner fell for a female impersonator? Did you look under the bed? Yeah. Ugh. I know he's supposed to protect you, but does he have to stay in the same suite with us? I keep expecting him to break in while we're making love. Oh. He'd only do something like that if he heard something unusual. Like what? Like if I got excited. Jeez. Can I get you anything, boss? Voila! Oh, when did we move? During dress rehearsal. Now what if I'd flopped? Well, we would have ordered a sumptuous meal, charged into room service, drunk the champagne, compliments of the management. And then jumped out the window. That's why I chose a three-star hotel and specifically requested accommodations above the third floor. <laughs> is a religious experience. Now, when are we going to be able to afford another bedroom? As soon as we're sure you're not just a flash in the pan. Now, uh, oh, my God! <laughs> Besides, one bedroom, one bed promotes the illusion that we are lovers. Well, if we decide to part ways, one of us could set up housekeeping in the bidet. <laughs> <laughs> to Victor, long may he reign. At least long enough to pay the rent. Yeah. Hurry up. What's the rush? You know what they say. When in Paris. No, that's when in Rome. No, Rome makes me hungry. Paris makes me horny. <laughs> What's the matter? You still thinking about the couch? Ooh, ooh. Oh, okay. Any more thoughts about King Marchand? No, other than how attractive he is, how beautiful and intense his eyes are. What would it be like to spend a week with him on a desert island? No, he scarcely crossed my mind. What about you? Oh, pretty much along the same lines, except I fantasized three weeks on a desert island. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy pretending to be a man. Yeah, especially if you are a man. It's no big deal. It happens to everyone. Men, I mean. We're lucky. Women, I mean. We can fake it if we have to. Oh, don't get me wrong, I never have with you. Faked it, I mean. With you, it's like... Pow, 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 pow. Like the 4th of July every time. Just cause tonight you couldn't get it. Up till now, it's been grand, Pookie, really grand. And if there's one thing I know for sure, you can't let it get you. You should excuse the expression. Down. <laughs> you can't worry about it. You have to put it out of your mind. The more you think about it, the more you worry. The more you worry, the more you think about it. Think, worry. Yeah, cheery. Worry, think. It gets like a viscous circle. <laughs> and before you know it, you are impudent. <laughs> uh, 
Hey, Pookie. What you doing with the soap? Huh? Ah! Ah! <laughs> Oh, now, Norma, hold on. Now, hold on, Norma. Now, we're talking about this stuff. What's up, Bell? Come on, Norma. Oh, Norma! Oh, no. <laughs> Not my new club, Norma, please. Norma, Norma. put it down, put it down. <laughs> with your boss. I thought she'd help you relax. She has never helped me relax. Well, send her home. <laughs> Terribly sorry, I... Mr. Todd. Good evening. What an amazing coincidence. Uh, Victor and I are occupying the next suite. You don't say. We heard sounds that indicated you were still up. So I thought I'd drop by, pay my respects, and perhaps uh, borrow a cup of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if it got a little noisy. Miss Cassidy had a nightmare. Oh, poor dear. Well, tell Miss Cassidy I wish her pleasant dreams. Good night. Good night. Uh, good night, Mr. Bernstein. Good night, Mr. Todd. Love your ensemble. <laughs> well, what do you know? Next door, huh? Pookie! Oh, oh, no, boss! No, 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 no! Who would you least expect to be our next door neighbors? King Ma Shong and his bleach blonde road scholar. <gasps> Close, but you left out Mr. Bernstein. Who? Mr. Bernstein, the sturdy bodyguard with the puppy dog eyes. Him. You, you mean like the King Marshawn and that other eye? Inches apart. But, as my dear old grandmother used to say, in matters of sexual proximity, an inch is as good as a mile. Oh. <laughs> Toddy, I can't believe it. I spend my whole life looking for Prince Charming, and, and just when I decide that I'm better off being a man, he moves in next door. Well, say la vie. <laughs> good night. I'll be up in a while. Warm your feet. <sighs> is living next door my mind is living next door i think i'm in an unfixable fix my heart and my mind are in 626 so what am i doing in 624 no question he's a most attractive guy the trouble is so am I That's 
This is the final dress rehearsal. Don't be nervous, darling. It all depends on you. <laughs> chance that I wed him. They all do as Louis says. My, oh yes, I just bed him and then I lounge on my chest. Who cares what they do? Who cares what Louis says? Revolution came, and my social life is not the same. So I tried to play a different game, living one day at a time. Since each day may be my last, I'll make each moment quite sublime. Louis said she must sit home, stay at home. All adoring, he said she should be more prim. Louis says I mustn't lose my head And the people haven't any bread I said, let them eat cake Louis says That kind of attitude could cause a great Mustache Louis says our time is short This is our Their museum I said they can go to hell Wish them well Seven. <laughs> 
Stop, oh, no. baby. Well, as they say in show business, bad rehearsal, good opening night. Well, when I was a second-rate soprano, at least I had a maid. A maid who could swear you were a second-rate soprano and not a first-class imposter. Well, you trust my dressmaker. And he trusts me not to reveal certain things that might embarrass his wife and six children. Oh, you should be ashamed of yourself. Shame is a second-rate emotion invented by the pious in order to exploit the human race. Who said that? I said that. (laughs) <laughs> you don't believe in shame. I believe in happiness. Thinks he can push me around, does he? Thinks I'm gonna hop on the next boat for the States and that'll be the end of that? Norma, you're gonna miss your boat. Well, ain't that just too bad? Isn't. Isn't, isn't, isn't. Oh, oh, Because oh. Mrs. Cassidy's little girl, Norma, isn't. Gonna take this one lying down. The boss isn't gonna like this. Oh, yeah? Well, as Eve said to Adam in the Garden of Eden, if you don't like apples... (laughs) Chuck Chitty! Excuse my language. (sighs) Mr. Todd! (sighs) Norma! Pardon-moi. Shut up! King is running me out of town because I gave him a bad time about you. Norma! I'll be up in a minute! King's got the hearts for you. But he's convinced you're a woman. He just can't face that maybe he's got a problem. That maybe he really likes guys. So he can't get it up with me, so he ships me off to Chicago. Norma! I'm just saying goodbye! Goodbye. Goodbye. No hard feelings. Cause you're a guy, right? Even if you are a queer... Gay. It's not like I'm losing out to some carnivore and female, right? Norma! All right! If you ever change your preferences... You'll be the first to know. (laughs) Chicago, I'm in the book. Out of my way, pheasant! her with him tonight so what's the big deal it's not a big deal all right all right so why am i shy as a spotty faced kid in a high school prom why i'll tell you why it's because i don't know where this crazy dame this victor guy whoever he is is coming from that's why I am a guy who knows himself, so I really don't give a damn. I never could be in love with a man. But what if I am? I mean, me. Ha! Gay! Ha! If I know that I'm not, what's the problem I got? And why do I feel this way? The only logical answer is that he's a dame. I know that I'm right. I can tell from the way that I feel. Yeah! So maybe the way to play it is to go along with the game. And if for some dumb reason I'm wrong, is it such a big deal? Yeah! I've never been wrong about dames, not once in my life. If I had been, you could bet I'd be stuck with a wife. But not me. Not King! My life has been one sweet perpetual fling. I played so many games, fanned the flames. 
flames with loads of dames And I'd taken the blame from each dame who claimed I tricked her But now at last I'm in love with Victor It's a trick and a trap, I'm not taking the rap for a crime that I didn't do I gotta find out if he is a she If I don't, all my nightmares could end up true There's only one way to find out for sure But I haven't got the guts to try Or have I? If I'm right, I'll throw a party tonight If I'm wrong, I think I'll die But yes, I guess I gotta do it Hell, there isn't that much to it I can't sit here one more minute letting time go by I need to put an end to all this how and why I need to know like some guys need an alibi I'll go myself I just can't ask a private eye Is the girl I'm in love with A guy Boss? Boss? This is Mr. Bernstein. Any messages? Oh, we did. A few minutes ago. Okay, thanks. Boss? Better hurry, we only have five minutes. Shit! Hello, this is Mr. Todd. Any messages? Thank you. May I have Mr. Bernst, I mean Mr. Uh, uh, Marchand Sweet, please? Mr. Marchand wants to take us after dinner. Well, if I'll never guess, then you had better tell me. Che Louis. Well, I don't mean to sound like a party poop, but I think that's a very bad idea. <laughs> oh, it's not such a bad idea. You're the toast of Paris. Le Beast will be so busy groveling, he won't even recognize you. Besides, Le Beast owes me a good grovel. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you downstairs. Mr. Marchand, sweet, please. Get that. Oh. Hello? We'll meet you downstairs in two minutes. Okay.
May I ask you a personal question, Mr. Marchand? I worry more about the answers than I do the questions. It's rather obvious that Mr. Bernstein is on hand to ensure your continued good health. That's not a question. Why is he sitting way over there? Strategic. Broader field of vision, a clearer field of fire. You must have been in the army. Once or twice. <laughs> Would you mind if I joined him? He looks so lonely. No, I don't mind. I promise not to inhibit his field of fire. <laughs> Incorrigible. Can I buy you a drink, Mr. Bernstein? Coffee. Coffee. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I am especially happy and honored to have with us one of the great entertainers of our time, the Toast of Paris, Victor! He will honor us with a song. Maybe an old English tune. Oh, he knows. He's bluffing. Well, what should I do? Pull yourself together and act like a man. Uh. Toddy? Trust me. I'll get you for that one. <laughs>
that was my club. I don't care if you are a man. I'm, I'm not a man. I still don't care. <laughs> Seduces us in ways we don't expect to be hidden secrets. She is all too aware we long to share. That's why it is, I guess, we all adore her and hunger to explore her hidden charm. She fools us all because she's so capricious and nothing's more delicious than to sleep in her arms. For Paris by night's the only way to realize that all in all it's nighttime, not the day that sets her apart. guys. Yo, <laughs> oh, squash! Wait! Oh. <laughs> squash, hey! Oh, I, I know what you're thinking. No, you don't. Look, King, if a guy like you has the guts to admit he's gay, well... I know you and the Count will be very happy together. <sighs> oh, what's wrong? Oh, uh, nothing. Just I'm finding this trip to Paris a little more bizarre than usual. Oh, thanks a lot. Oh, no, <laughs> not you. Not you. Oh, well, why not me? A woman pretending to be a man. Oh, pretending now you can to be stop a... pretending. Well, what if I didn't want to? I'm a big star. Oh, that. Oh, and something much more than that. For the first time in my life, I've. I feel emancipated. Emancipated? Well, yes, I'm, I'm my own man, so to speak. You should be able to relate to that. I have to be honest with you. Right now, I'm having a little trouble relating to anything. <laughs> now, do you think it would be fair for me to ask you to give up your job? <laughs> it would be ridiculous. Well, yes, you want me to give up mine. Well, look, I'm not pretending to be somebody else. What if the shoe was on the other foot? What if you were the man and I was the woman, pretending to be a man? Love is a two-way street. I can't believe I said that. <laughs> so what are we going to do? You want me to be honest? Always. I could never live like that. Well, because you'd be afraid that people would think that you were in love with a man. Right. So, we've got 
a problem. I guess we have. What we have here is almost a love song. I'm perfect for you. You're perfect for me. Everything they sing about we have in profusion. The same sense of humor. Almost a love song Why aren't we the song of the year? Does the moment go by? Are we frightened to try? If we are, more's the pity Maybe it's for the best. That's almost as bad as love is a two-way street. Well, sooner or later, I'd probably ask you to stop being a gangster because I would be afraid that everyone would think that I was your mole. I'm not a gangster. Oh, 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 just a businessman with a bodyguard. A businessman who does business with gangsters better have a bodyguard or he's out of business. A businessman who does business with gangsters and claims that he is not a gangster. Well, but that sounds like the kind of act I do. I think we're both pretenders, and I guess that's not a very good basis for a relationship. But it was fun while it lasted. One thing's clear here. Left with him. Yes. That it wasn't great? Oh, it was sensational. Then what are you doing here? He has cold feet. Factually or figuratively? Both. <laughs> There's a fairy who hides in my garden. Oh, 
Well, Mr. Bernstein, come in, come in. Good evening, Mr. Todd. Champagne? Uh, don't mind if I do. And to what do I owe the pleasure of your company? I have something to tell you. I'm all ears. I'm gay. <laughs> Be still, my heart. Does your boss know? I just told him. And how do you feel, Mr. Bernstein, now that you have finally hoisted your true colors? Scared, I guess. <laughs> Naturally. And sort of like it's my birthday. That's because, in a way, it is. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Where is she? Upstairs. She? It's a long and complicated story. How long have you been, you know, I can't remember when I wasn't, you know. But I know you 15 years. You were an all-American center for Notre Dame. A center. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mr. Bernstein. Call me Squash. <laughs> Must I? <laughs> I think we should try living together. Your place or mine? Yeah. 
Hi, Sal. Thanks for coming. How come you're here in Kingston in Paris? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Seeing as how he's your partner and everything. Well, what's he done? Got himself another doll? No, another guy. <laughs> Run that by me again. King is living with a Polish fairy. <laughs> hey, where are you going? We're all going to Paris. Me too? All means all. Naturally. You know French? Oh, sure. I just don't speak it. Let's drink a toast to the new lovers. Knowing the boss, it's not going to be easy. Knowing Victoria, I'm inclined to agree. I, me, for aught that I could ever read, could ever hear by tale or history. The course of true love never did run smooth. You surprise me, Mr. Bernstein. We did Midsummer Night's Dream my junior year in college. <laughs> we did Hamlet. I bet you were a romantic Hamlet. No, but I was a fabulous Ophelia. Ready for your thoughts? We've had dinner for two weeks every night in the hotel. You know what I'd love to do? I'd love to go out to a romantic bistro and have a candlelit dinner and then go dancing. Dancing? Yeah. Where? Where, where, where people usually go dancing. Where two men usually go dancing. Oh. Like the Ritz? Well, <laughs> I'm game if you are. I'm <laughs> just kidding. You don't think I'd love to take you dancing? Have you on my arm in a gorgeous gown strolling down the Champs Elysees? You know how proud that would make me? I'm going out. Out? I need some exercise. Get some air. I'm worried about the boss. Yes, your boss is not a very happy man in love. Is there a solution? Well, not unless Victor reveals to the world that he's a woman or King finds some way of being joyful living with a man. Darling?
sweet, please. Check. A gay all-American center who quotes Shakespeare and plays chess like a Russian master. Do I dare ask, can you cook? I'm a great cook. <laughs> the good fairy must have given herself a hernia making you come true. <laughs> Hello? Uh, daughter, can I come over, please? Yes, of course. It's Victoria. She's coming over. She sounds miserable. I'd better go check on the boss. Drink? Oh, no, thank you. You look like you could use one. Want me to ask you again? It's not working out. Did you really think it would? Well, I... I uh, yes. I hoped it would. Well... It's been my experience in affairs of the heart. Hope's never enough. Oh, I just wanted to go dancing. Where? At the Ritz? Oh, I know. Two men dancing at the Ritz is unorthodox. No. Two men dancing at the Ritz is really not the problem. It's not? The real problem is, you're really not two men. No, Tony, I don't want to be a man anymore. Why, oh, no. <laughs> Neither do I. Oh, hi. Sal? I thought as long as I was in the neighborhood, I'd pay my old business partner a friendly visit. Uh, he's not here, Sal. Oh, yeah? Where is he? Shacked up with the Count? Uh, he said something about the Arctic Circle. Sure. And I'm the Moaning Lisa. <laughs> now, you're gonna tell me where your boss is, or do I let Juke shoot you? Uh, excuse me, boss. Remember, it's my time. Oh, yeah. Oh. We've been so busy, I forget who's supposed to shoot whom. Who? What? You can't say whom, because there ain't no proposition in front of it. Isn't. Any. What? Isn't any. Preposition. Shut yeah, up. Exactly. Now, for the last time, Squash, where's your boss? Mr. Marchand, sweet, please. Sal, I swear on my mother's grave. Your mother's still alive. Your kid. Shoot him. Hold it. Yeah? Hello? Who is parlaying, please? Dumb French don't even understand their own language. The Windy City Barracuda's back. Norma? Stay here. Oh, no, no, not on your life. I'm coming with you. How about it, Squash? Do I let Clam shoot you? Personally, I think that would be a big mistake. For who? Whom? Shoot her! <laughs> Hold it! Good to see you, Sal. What brings you to Paris? Fairy tales. Well, if it ain't Big Shot King Marchand, who these days maybe ought to change it to Queen. Did somebody call? Hey! Uh, here he is. He's the Count. And this is Mr. Todd, the Count's former lover, you know. A bunch of queers. Two queers doth not a bunch make. They prefer gay. You want the truth? Ask the Count. Ask me what? Ask him. I already know the answer. No, no. Are you and King Lovers? Yes. Yeah. Oh, here, here. Oh, my God. I love I'm going to throw up. I love him very much. Sign this. You mind if I read it first? What for? Since the mob don't like being in business with homos, I'm buying you up. So. You know my half is worth ten times as much. Yeah, sign the paper. Darling, don't do it. It's all right, sweetheart. Darling? Sweetheart? Jesus, King. That's disgusting. A guy like you turning queer? We grew up together. Yeah. Well, you know, Sal, that might have something to do with it. Whoa. 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 What's he gonna do? Wait! Lock the door. Would anyone like a drink? Sal. Sal, isn't that short for Sally? <laughs> You're gonna regret this, King. 
And you, squash for shame, hanging out with a bunch of fairies? Ah! 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 You, no good! Two-tired son of a bitch! He's a woman! A ah! What happened? La Peace was here! Fear not, dear lady. I've been prepared for this for a long time. Oh, but Toddy, he's on the whole kit and caboodle. Well, I can't vouch for the kit, but the caboodle's a winner. Oh. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Dinner after the show? Love to. have that gun, I'd personally take you apart. Absolutely, boss. Uh-oh. <laughs> Go ahead, boss. He's a pansy. He can't fight. Shut up. I seen him fight once. Shut up. Remember when he beat up the whole Michigan backfield? Shut yeah. up! You're lucky. I got a bad tennis elbow. <laughs> Aren't you right-handed, boss? Shut up. Sorry. Come on. Ow. Welcome. Mr. Todd, sweet, please. Hello? Are you all right? I've never been better. That's great. I'll be in my room if you need me. Thank you, Squash. Anytime, Victoria. So my sad duty to tell you that Victor has decided to retire. And what you are about to see 
will be his final performance.